Welcome. In this session, we're going to look further into the question of why people get sick and die of certain causes. To do so, we're going to explore what we call risk factors that relate to the leading causes of deaths and dallies. When we talk about children under five years of age, we're going to highlight the important risk factors of nu nutritional issues, including suboptimal breastfeeding and micronutrient deficiencies, the lack of clean water and appropriate sanitation, and the risks of indoor air pollution. When we consider the health of adults, we're going to focus largely on behavioral, so-called behavioral risk factors, including tobacco smoking, obesity, high blood sugar, diets that are uh, low in, um, in fruit but high in sodium, and we'll also speak of hypertension. By the time you finish this session, you should be able to indicate the key risk factors for the leading burdens of death and disease. Note how these risk factors vary by country, income group, age, and sex. And be familiar with the website of the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation concerning the burden of disease so that you might be able to explore these topics further on your own. I'm going to begin this, uh, this part of our discussion with some vignettes and then probe my students to help us understand some of the points that I'd like to come out. Esperanza is a three-year-old girl in Guatemala. She is very short and she is very underweight for her age. She gets, fr she gets frequent bouts of diarrhea and she's also had pneumonia twice this year alone. So Emily, why do you think Esperanza is so small and so unhealthy? Um, maybe her family can't afford to buy food for her. And Rachel, what do you think? It could also be poor water quality and sanitation in the home. Shailen? It could also be um, how the mother chose to breastfeed or introduce complementary foods. Okay, so we see the importance here, and we'll talk more about nutritional issues. Uh, it, it's actually especially important for young children. Chun Quan is a 55-year-old man in China. He has chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Yafet, why do you think he might have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease? Um, it could be because of uh, heavy pollution in the area. It could be heavy pollution. And what's another factor that might contribute to that, Elizabeth? Cigarette smoking. Tobacco smoking, cigarette smoking. John is a 40-year-old American in the state of Indiana. John has a body mass index that's over 30. He's very obese. Emily, let's come back to you. What are some of the risk factors that contribute to John's obesity? Um, he could have some genetic predisposition. He could? He could. And what else? Um, he also uh, might have a very sedentary lifestyle. Okay. And Rachel, what else? He might eat a diet that's high in fat and salt and sugar. He might have a diet that isn't conducive, especially in the face of a sedentary lifestyle, to maintaining an appropriate body weight. Now, the Global Burden of Disease studies have looked at causes of deaths and dallies, but they've also looked at the risk factors, what they call attributable risk factors for the causes of deaths and dallies that they, uh, that they have examined. The 2013 Burden of Disease study examined 79 causes of deaths and dallies, and which you'll see is part of the Global Burden of Disease website on the IHME website itself. So let's explore some of these risk factors directly from the website. And we're going to go first to what they call the heat map. And we're going to look at the leading risk factors for, let's say, um, World Bank regions and uh, globally. And as you can see, you can manipulate the website. So you can look at causes or risks, deaths, years of life lived with disability or dallies, a variety of different geographic groupings uh, by age group and by sex. So here, let's say we'd like to see for one of the lower income regions, what are the leading risk factors for, uh, and let's, let's go to deaths if that's okay. For deaths, in 2013, given what it was that people died from, 
what were the leading attributable risk factors for those deaths in these regions and globally for both sexes and all age groups? I'm sorry to repeat that, but I want to be exquisitely clear about it. So let's click for a second on Sub-Saharan Africa. And we know that in Sub-Saharan Africa, the burden of deaths continues to be one that's predominantly related to communicable diseases, perinatal conditions, nutritional causes, and maternal causes as well. And so why do these things happen? Well, when they, in terms of the attributable risk factors that the Global Burden of Disease Study exam, examined, what we see is it's the most important risk factor for deaths in West Africa in this year was, in fact, unsafe sex. And you can see it here. You can also click on it. As we go down, we see that it's childhood undernutrition. Then we have high blood pressure, unsafe water, and something that might surprise some of you is the importance of indoor air pollution. Almost everybody understands the importance of outdoor air pollution, but in many countries in the world, people are cooking with biofuels on unimproved stoves inside their home with poor ventilation, and you'll consistently see this. Let's look at a region of the world which has gone farther in its epidemiological profile, and we know uh, is a region in which people die predominantly of non-communicable causes. So let's go to Latin America uh, and the Caribbean. And here what we see, and we can click on the box again, is it's really quite the, the attributable risk factors for deaths in 2013 for both sexes and all age groups in Latin America and the Caribbean World Bank region were substantially different, as you would expect, from those for Sub-Saharan Africa. Here it's high blood pressure, high body mass index or obesity, high fasting plasma glucose or high blood sugar, if you will, tobacco smoking, and then uh, kidney problems as well. And if you keep going, you'll see, of course, as you would expect, uh, alcohol use, high total cholesterol, a diet high in sodium, and a sedentary lifestyle, low physical activity. Elizabeth, you have a question. Uh, Professor Skolnick, is it possible for some of the risk factors to be health conditions in and of themselves? So, um, by and large, the risk factors are not health conditions themselves. But it's certainly true that in some cases they are. And you could explore in the uh, methodological sections of the Global Burden of Disease Study and its many constituent parts how it is that they've defined these particular risk factors. But indeed, you're, you're, uh, you've raised a very important point. If we look, for example, at hypertension, hypertension is a risk factor for stroke. Hypertension is a risk factor for uh, cardiovascular disease. But hypertension is a cause and a condition uh, itself. And, um, but by and large, as you go through this, you'll see that the list of attributable risk factors that they examined for the causes of death and dallies in these global burden of disease, largely they're risk factors. They haven't looked, by the way, at social determinants of health, which is another very large and important issue. But it's a very good point for which I, I thank you. So um, let's look now at how these risk factors would change for, um, let's go to, let's go to um, females, if we might. Okay, so now let's look for a second at females, and we're doing this again for deaths only for um, World Bank regions uh, in 2013, deaths per 100,000. And let's click first on Sub-Saharan Africa again, and what we'll see is that the leading risk factor for death is unsafe sex that relates to sexually transmitted infections, including HIV. But then we see again for women, childhood undernutrition, high blood pressure, and unsafe water and sanitation, as well as, again, household air pollution. Let's just shift this immediately to men and see how that would look for West Africa as well. So we've gone now from females to males. We're still looking at all ages, and we're looking at deaths per 100,000 in 2013. So if we click on Sub-Saharan Africa, as we have, the risk factors for men are exactly the same as they are for women. Now, I'm not going to explore um, risk factors. Well, let, let, in fact, let's. Let's go ahead and now let's look at risk factors for under fives. 
And we know there's 17,000 under fives who die every day in the world. We know these deaths are predominantly in lowish income countries. Uh, and uh, here what we do is, let's start again with Sub-Saharan Africa. And this highlights the importance of nutritional issues as well as unsafe water and sanitation. The leading risk factor for the deaths of under five children that occurred in 2013 in Sub-Saharan Africa is um, childhood undernutrition, and also very important and related to that is suboptimal breastfeeding. And then you also see, for example, the importance of unsafe water and sanitation, which also relates to hand washing when it comes to hygiene. And then in addition, we see um, household air pollution again as a very important uh, cause of deaths. If we go to Latin America and the Caribbean, what we'll see is a pattern that's um, somewhat, somewhat similar, actually, because of the kids in Latin America and the Caribbean, of the under fives who die, they're still dying. They're not dying of HIV like they might in Sub-Saharan Africa, but they're dying of diarrheal disease, lower respiratory infection. It's relatively poor children who are dying, often indigenous people, and therefore what we see is the risk factors, the attributable risk factors for those deaths continue to be the important issues surrounding childhood nutrition, unsafe water, inappropriate sanitation, uh, and um, indoor air pollution as well. Now, let's look for a second at DALIs, and let's go back to um, DALIs for World Bank regions for all ages, both sexes, in 2013. And Let's click again on Sub-Saharan Africa. And again, we're looking at what are the attributable risk, what were the attributable risk factors, the most important attributable risk factors for deaths that occurred in Sub-Saharan Africa in 2013. And here what we see is because such a, so many of these deaths relate to the deaths of young children, we see childhood undernutrition as the most important attributable risk factor, but then unsafe sex, unsafe water sanitation, suboptimal breastfeeding. Again, this is heavily dominated by the fact that such a large share of the total deaths in, in, in Sub-Saharan Africa is actually occurring in young children. Let's shift now to, and it, and it doesn't differ that much because of the pattern of deaths from what we saw when we looked at the attributable risk factors for death. Let's look at Eastern Europe and, well, let's, let's go back to Latin America and the Caribbean so we can be look at some of the same things as before, but now we see the beginning of a shift. Because in Latin America and the Caribbean, although there remains more deaths than we would want to see in young children, we also see here that the pattern of attributable risks begins to shift toward the uh, causes of death of adults rather than children, especially as they relate to these so-called behavioral factors. High body mass index or obesity, high blood pressure, high fasting plasma glucose, high blood sugar, alcohol use, and smoking. So what, when you think about risk factors, uh, what's really important is to think about the causes of death and why these causes of death occur and, and, and what are some of those leading causes considering as well the attributable risk factors that make up, for example, the list that they examined in the Global Burden of Disease Studies. So in this session, you explored the website of the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation to get a feel for what they call the key attributable risk factors for the leading causes of deaths and dallies in different parts of the world, different country income groups, different ages, and different sexes. As we discussed, understanding these risk factors is absolutely essential to trying to get a fix on what it is that people get sick and die from, why did they get sick and die from these things, and what might be done at least cost, hopefully as rapidly as possible in a sustainable and doable way to make the world a better place and address these health conditions. In the next session, we're going to talk about value for money in health.